breathing. It's fundamental to life. But around the world today, millions of people have trouble breathing because of tobacco. If tobacco was a virus, it would have long ago been declared a public health emergency. Enjoy a smoke-free day, breathe some fresh air, and don't let tobacco take your breath away. Thank you to the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, for that introduction. Hello, my name is Joel Schaefer, and welcome to this special program to celebrate World No Tobacco Day. Today, in this special part one of our webinar series, we'll discuss the harmful effects of tobacco and secondhand smoke, as well as some of the benefits and strategies for quitting. We're joined by lung health specialists from around the world, Dr. Jane Rehedi Ongongo, Dr. Vin Gupta, and Dr. Hebe Gouda. To start us off, Dr. Vin Gupta, what should people know about the harmful effects of tobacco? Thank you for the question and thank you for having me. I, I think before uh, delving into that, I, I wanted to emphasize, and I think it's important to remember, that tobacco remains the leading cause of death for men worldwide. And that when you account for both men and women, it's the second leading cause of death and disability, a fact that has remained unchanged since 1990, when we first started publishing data on the global burden of disease. One in five smokers are likely to come down with chronic bronchitis, which often causes a chronic cough, makes you very uncomfortable, uh, or worse conditions. Uh, diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, what's, what is otherwise commonly known as emphysema. Patients with these conditions chronically feel breathless, are chronically reliant on inhalers to try to help them breathe better. They often have to carry around heavy oxygen tanks. And the effects of tobacco use are not only limited to primary users of tobacco. I think importantly, children who breathe secondhand smoke are far more likely to experience uh, frequent asthma exacerbations if they have it already, or they're far more likely to actually develop asthma as a result of that exposure. And that has untold effects on their ability to leave, lead productive and healthy lives. Thank you. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about how these respiratory diseases caused by tobacco impact quality of life? If you can't breathe adequately, you aren't able to enjoy tasks that you may otherwise have taken for granted. Walking your children, playing with your grandchildren, walking up a flight of stairs to the bedroom, just simple daily tasks like going to the grocery store. I can't remember one patient I've cared for, and I've cared for thousands with emphysema, other smoking-related lung diseases, who didn't wish they had quit earlier or who didn't wish they hadn't taken up cigarettes in the first place. We've heard about how traditional products of tobacco, like cigarettes, are dangerous to people's lung health. But what about newer products on the market, things like e-cigarettes? Should we be worried about those? Are those dangerous to your health? Actually, there are a lot of different uh, new products on the market now, and they can be very difficult to distinguish from one another. Some contain tobacco, some contain nicotine, and some contain neither. Uh, but none are harmless. Uh, they, uh, we don't know for sure, we can't give an accurate estimate of the risk associated with each of these products yet. Um, but they're probably going to vary depending on the factors that are associated with their characteristics. Uh, there's certainly some evidence that some of these products are, carry a risk for lung health and cardiovascular health. And nicotine itself, of course, is addictive. Uh, and can lead to dependency. One of the particular concerns with, uh, with these products is the way that they are marketed and the fact that they are often flavored to taste like cherry or bubble gum. Usually when products are flavored, this can uh, lead to a, a, uh, mis, uh, a underestimation of the, the risk associated with the product. Um, and it also appeals to younger people and to youth. Uh, of course, the growing fear is that youth will um, take, these, take on these products, potentially get addicted to these products, and that they may act as a gateway to more harmful 
products such as conventional cigarettes. This is a real challenge. Dr. Angongo, can you please tell us a little bit more about how secondhand smoke harms the lungs and who is most impacted by the harms of secondhand smoke? Secondhand smoke is uh, equally um, dangerous as the other type of tobacco smoke. It is known that about one million people die from secondhand smoke every year. And secondhand smoke mainly affects children. Children in the sense that they are small and they are still growing, their organs in the body are growing, and more so, they also breathe more faster than adults, meaning they would even inhale more of the contaminants. And this affects children so that they end up with problems like um, severe attacks of asthma, respiratory infections, symptoms like wheezing and coughing. They also get affected, especially in the first year of their life, infants. It has been noted that sudden infant death is more likely caused by um, secondhand smoke. So parents, starting with your homes, avoid smoking in your homes. And also mothers, avoid smoking because it affects uh, your pregnancy. Thank you for that. Once smokers become aware of the harms and want to quit using tobacco, what, what help is available to them? There are various um, ways of help that um, a smoker who needs to quit can receive. We have um, counseling methods and also treatment methods using medication. Both um, the kinds of uh, strategies are more effective if um, uh, put together. Starting that conversation with the health professional actually is uh, uh, the beginning of uh, uh, deciding which plan could uh, this individual go into. Other than just the brief counseling the health professional can uh, uh, provide to the individual, the, indiv the health provider can then direct to the, them to the best uh, options. This could be one-to-one -one counseling, it could be actually uh, also behavioral therapies. We have the non-prescribed medications like the nicotine replacement therapies. Then we also have other medications other than uh, nicotine replacement therapy, which we could also prescribe. A follow-up question on that same topic, but to Dr. Vin Gupta, what in your experience are the main barriers that people face after they've made that important decision to quit using tobacco? It's so hard. Uh, quitting tobacco is, is a lifestyle decision, but it's intensely personal. But what I've seen as the biggest barrier is access to behavioral health care, to mental health care, while an individual is trying to take this difficult uh, lifestyle decision on and to do so successfully. Dr. Gouda, can you tell us what are some of the short-term and long-term benefits of quitting tobacco use? The benefits of quitting can be felt almost immediately. Uh, within two weeks, a person who has quit will, uh, improve, will have improved lung function. Um, and within about 10 years, uh, an ex-smoker can expect to have reduced their risk of lung cancer by half that of somebody who continued to smoke. Good news, that should give many tobacco users some hope. Thank you to our panelists for their important perspectives. I hope that you found it interesting, and thank you for watching today. I hope you'll join us in our second webinar discussion, which will focus on tobacco control, uh, both at community and national level. From all of us here, we'll see you soon in the next webinar.